The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to worship on this baptism of the Lord Sunday. Today we're going to hear about Jesus' baptism and we're going to take time to give thanks for and remember our own baptisms. And if you don't already have one with you, I would encourage you to get a bowl of water um, for the time when we remember our baptisms. I have a few announcements today. Um, next Sunday, January 17th, we will be returning to in-person worship. And during the worship service, we will be ordaining and installing our incoming elders and deacons. We're going to live stream the service on our church Facebook page um, in real time, so as it's going on. And we're also going to record it and upload it um, to YouTube, to our church Facebook page and website. It'll be emailed as well. Um, so please note um, that if you join us for in-person worship, masks and social distancing will be required. Our annual meeting will be held on Sunday, January 24th, 2021, following worship. It will be held both in person and over Zoom at the same time. And we will also be celebrating communion that Sunday. So if you're going to gather with us from your home, um, just have some wine and juice ready for the service. If you need bread or juice, wine or juice, I meant bread or juice ready for the service. And if you need any bread or juice, um, just let me know and I will get those to you. We will have Wednesday morning prayer and coffee over Zoom, Zoom Bible study and prayer at the close of day this week. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Join with me in our opening litany for baptism of the Lord. In the beginning, darkness covered the deep, and God said, let there be light. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Through the words of the prophet, the Lord said, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Do not fear, says the Lord. I am with you. I have called you by name. You are mine. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. When Jesus was baptized by John, suddenly the heavens were opened. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. And as Jesus was coming out of the water, the Spirit of God rested on him like a dove. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. And a voice said, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Be with me in prayer. Almighty God, you anointed Jesus at his baptism with the Holy Spirit and revealed him as your beloved son. Keep us, your children, born of water and the Spirit, faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join with me in our opening hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns. Okay. 
we hear from Psalm 29, verses 1 through 11. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. On this baptism of the Lord Sunday, we remember our baptisms, where we were claimed as children of the covenant and beloved of God. Yet we live as those who are alienated from God. We have turned away from God, one another and the earth. Let us confess our sin together, trusting in God's mercy. Join with me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we are estranged from you and from one another. We treat others as strangers rather than as people created in your image and fellow children of God. We exploit the earth as though it were our possession rather than a gift entrusted to our care and a reflection of your image and glory. In your loving kindness, have mercy on us and free us from our sin. Fulfill the promises of our baptism so that we may rise to new life and live together in grace, justice, and peace. Friends, hear the good news of the gospel and of Jesus' solidarity in his own baptism by John with all who have been immersed in baptismal waters, repenting of their sin. God has forgiven us of all our sins and set us on new paths. Let us remember our baptisms and trust in God's mercy to restore our right standing as God's own. Know you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Join with me in our response, the Gloria Patri.
Be with me in prayer. Saving God, source of our calling, your word is full of power and glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may receive your grace and live as your beloved children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Listen now for the word of the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. Our second reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 1 through 7. Listen again for the word of the Lord. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. All together, there were about 12 of them. Our gospel reading today comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. Listen again for the word of the Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with a camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved with you, I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Darkness. Before God, the wind of God, the breath of God moved above the waters and spoke light into being. There was only darkness. John went into the wilderness at a time when the people of Israel, his people, were suffering under a Roman occupation. It was a time when sinfulness and injustice even among the religious leaders of Israel, was rampant. Darkness. 
sinfulness, injustice, continues to surround us in our world, in our nation as well. We too need to hear John's call to repentance. We too need to feel the movement of God's spirit. We too need to see the light of God, the light that breaks through the darkness. When the earth was nothing but deep darkness, God moved. God spoke and light was born. God's powerful word created something new in the world, something that was good. God called the light day. The earth cannot survive without light. The sun provides plants with much needed food and animals like us with, with much needed vitamins. It brings warmth and illumination and better health. The Lord created light for us, for the earth to sustain all of creation. This was a creative act of love. Many, many years later, God did something new again. The world was once again a place of darkness. Injustice, oppression, and sin affected all of humanity. Even the religious and political leaders of God's people, Israel, bore responsibility for this darkness. The Lord found that it was impossible for humanity to save themselves from sin. So God broke into the world, into the darkness and sin, in the person of Jesus. The powerful word of God, which created the light, became human. The light of the world that overcame the darkness that was before creation came to the earth as a person. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus' coming into the world is not announced by angels at his birth, but by the voice of God and the appearance of the Holy Spirit at his baptism. John, the one who was to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord, had gone into the wilderness by the Jordan River. John called for people to prepare for this new thing that God was doing by repenting of their sins and being baptized with water as their sins were forgiven. John was preparing them for the one who was to come, the one who would bring the power of God, the Holy Spirit, to humanity. Jesus went to John among the sinners and was baptized just as they had been. But when Jesus was baptized, the powerful voice of God once again spoke. The voice called Jesus, my son, the beloved, and was pleased with Jesus. The heavens were torn apart and the Holy Spirit came down to Jesus like a dove. In Jesus' baptism, the Lord announced to the world that Jesus is special, that God was doing something new through Jesus. Jesus came into the darkness and sinfulness of humanity to bring salvation forgiveness, and reconciliation. This was a self-giving act of love. 
Then the Lord moved toward humanity in a new way once again. After Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, God didn't leave humanity on our own to fumble in the darkness once more. The Holy Spirit breaks into the world and moves among the people. The Holy Spirit comes to bring comfort, encouragement, and guidance to God's people. To those who are baptized in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit bestows spiritual gifts. These gifts enable all of Jesus' followers, including us, to join with God in working for the transformation of the world into the kingdom of God, where peace, justice, and love abound. Through the Holy Spirit, we're given the opportunity to be bearers of God's light in the darkness of our world. This continues to be an empowering act of love. In those times when it feels like sin and darkness are the only things we can see, and we feel them closing in on us, we can listen for the voice of God, the powerful voice that spoke light into the darkest, deepest void, the voice that still calls us to repentance, to acknowledge our role in the sin and darkness we see around us, the voice that proclaimed Jesus God's beloved son at his baptism, the voice that claims us as beloved children in our baptisms. The voice that promises us forgiveness and salvation through Jesus, the word of God, the light of the world. The voice that promises us we will never be alone because the Holy Spirit is with us. The spirit that comforts us encourages us, challenges us, and gives us the gifts to share the light and love of God with the world around us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me now as we affirm our faith using selections from the Confession of Belhar. We believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who gathers, protects, and cares for the church through word and spirit. This God has done since the beginning of the world and will do to the end. We believe that Christ's work of reconciliation is made manifest in the church as the community of believers who have been reconciled with God and with one another. That this unity of the people of God must be manifested and be active in a variety of ways. And that we love one another. That we share one faith, have one calling, are of one soul and one mind have one God and Father, are filled with one spirit, are baptized with one baptism, eat of one bread and drink of one cup, confess one name, are obedient to one Lord, work for one cause and share one hope. We believe that God has revealed God's self as the one who wishes to bring about justice and true peace among people. That God in a world full of injustice and enmity, in a special way, the God of the destitute, the poor and the wronged, that God calls the church to follow God in this. For God brings justice to the oppressed and gives bread to the hungry. 
that God wishes to teach the church to do what is good and to seek the right. That the church must therefore stand by people in any form of suffering and need, which implies, among other things, that the church must witness against and strive against any form of injustice, so that justice may roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. That the church, as the possession of God, must stand where the Lord stands, namely against injustice and with the wronged. That in following Christ, the church must witness against all the powerful and privileged who selfishly seek their own interests and thus control and harm others. Jesus is Lord. To the one and only God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be honor and the glory forever and ever. We turn now to a time of giving thanks for our baptism. Join with me in giving thanks for baptism. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Glory to you, O God. Your voice is over the waters, full of power and majesty. Your word shakes the wilderness and blesses us with peace. We give you thanks and praise for the new thing you have done in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Baptized by John in the Jordan, you anointed him with your Holy Spirit and claimed him as your beloved son. We give you thanks and praise that by the grace of our baptism, you have claimed us as well and poured out the gifts of your spirit so that we might be dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ. Continue to pour out your spirit upon us. Empower us to love and serve you and live your faithful people, bearing witness to the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. As we come now to the time where we remember our baptisms, I invite you to dip your fingers into a bowl of water and make the sign of the cross on your foreheads. Remember and know you are baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Remember and know that through the waters of baptism, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the power of the Holy Spirit. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Be with me in prayer. O oh God, you are our life and breath, our light and fire, our teacher and helper. We praise you for your handiwork in shaping creation. We commit ourselves to serve you for the sake of the gospel. We devote ourselves to prayer with and for your people. We offer ourselves with vulnerability and look to you alone for strength. Be our rest, be our rock, be our Lord. Amen.
Be with me now as we continue in prayer. We approach God in prayer, not as strangers, but as beloved children baptized in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise for the story of Jesus' baptism by John in the wilderness, for it reminds us of our own baptisms. Just as you claim Jesus as your beloved, so also we have been claimed as your own children. We remember before you and all the children and adults who have been baptized in this congregation of your people and for their parents and sponsors. Help us to remember as a congregation the promises we also have made to each of them, to nurture them in their lives of faith, And help us remember our own baptisms daily. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, our baptisms also remind us that the font is the true center of our cosmos. The place where we were called to live as your beloved people in covenant relation with you, with one another, and with your good creation. Help us remember that declaration and promise, especially in difficult times like these. Amid a pandemic that is devastating lives and communities, amid exposure of the racism still wreaking its havoc in our nation, amid painful polarization and division, amid terrifying scenes of insurrection and violence in our nation's capital, we claim our center in your baptismal promise of love. Empower us to live out that love in all we do, healing divisions, addressing enmity, reaching out to those we perceive as enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all nations, we pray for elected officials in our own country and in all countries around the globe, for those who have been entrusted to exercise leadership on behalf of the common good. We pray that they would act in ways that would bring justice and peace. Help them to discern wise use of resources to address the needs of citizens suffering from the pandemic and its grave economic strains. And move us all to attend to the cries of the marginal in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, as you are well pleased with Christ, help us to live in a way that will be pleasing to you. As you have called us to listen to Christ, help us to always heed his word and seek his will. And Lord, be with us as we continue to pray for those in our congregation who are in need of healing, who are in mourning, who need to feel your comfort and peace surrounding them and lifting them up. All of these things, we pray in the name of Jesus, your beloved Son, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we move into our time of dedicating our offerings, I would again invite you to 
send in your offering to the church or drop it off to the church office if you would like to do that. On this baptism of the Lord Sunday, we celebrate the great gift of baptism and the life of promise therein. God has given us life and resources for it. So let us give in return. We take time now to get dedicate our gifts. Join with me in the doxology. with me in our prayer of dedication. O God, in our baptisms we have been named and claimed as your covenant people, connected deeply with you, with one another, and with the earth. May these gifts be used as a witness to your love, peace, and justice at work in the world, renewing the face of the earth. Amen. Join with me in our closing hymn, My Soul Cries Out with a Joyful Shout.
hear the voice of God that claimed you in baptism. You are precious, beloved in God's sight. God has claimed our lives in baptism that we might die to sin and be raised to new life. And God's spirit empowers us now to follow Jesus into our world. So as you go, lift up the brokenhearted, stand with the oppressed and work for justice and peace. Love God with your whole life and love neighbors as yourself. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and bring you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Join with me in our benediction response, the threefold Amen.